Firstly, I have to say I am super excited to demonstrate Power BI organizational data types in Excel. Just imagine having a single cell that contains everything you need to know about a product or employee or a company, to name a few. And this rich data might include images, pricing, stock on hand, and much more. And you can then reference the data with the formulas you know and love. You can use it to build Excel pricing models, invoices, quotes, planning, the list is endless. And your files will be a fraction of the size they would be if all of this data was stored in a table in the file. These organizational data types can be accessed from any Excel file belonging to users who you've shared the data with. And because there's a single central source of data, it's easy to update and our users can get the latest information at the click of a button. Before we get started on the how, I'd like to introduce you to organizational data types and show you some examples of them in use. In this Excel file, I've used organizational data types to build a course info table that I can use to get all the information I might need to know about one of our courses. And this is super useful when I'm answering emails from people inquiring about our courses because I can use it as a one-stop point of reference. For example, I can choose a course category from the slicer and then choose a course from the list of organizational data types. I can now see the course logo and the syllabus links that I might like to share in the email reply. I also have the pricing and who's teaching the course. All the data you see here is extracted from the organizational data type in cell C3 using formulas, including the course image, the syllabus links and the teacher information and pricing details. Referencing the data with formulas is easy. In this cell, I can equals the cell containing the data type, and then using the dot operator, I get a list of the fields that I can extract data for. So for example, if I wanted to know the course category, I could tab to select it, and there it is. And if I turn on trace dependence, you can see all of the cells that are connected to that one cell containing the data type. And if I open the course card, I can also see the rich data for this organizational data type. So you don't have to insert the data into cells. You can simply open the card and reference it from there. I can even extract data to the grid using this button here. I'm not going to do it in this example because it's going to put it into column D and that column's not very big, but that's another way you can extract the data. Now in this example, the teacher name is another organizational data type, but if you look in the formula bar, you can see I've used XLOOKUP to find the teacher name from the course data type in cell C3, and then look up the teacher's table to bring in the teacher data type. And if we go to the working sheet, you can see the teacher data types in this table here. Another tool I've built is an invoicing template. Now this could just as easily be a quote or a receipt, for example. Most of our customers pay online, but sometimes when dealing with large corporates or governments, they prefer to pay by bank transfer, so we issue invoices. Columns A and H are workings, and the printable invoice is in columns C through F. Now all I need to do is choose a product from the list of products here, enter the quantity, and my invoice calculates. And I can continue to choose different products from the list, adding the quantity, and it all flows through. I can also change the currency up here, and it's all connected to the data type that I have in column A. We can see here the description is referencing column A using the dot operator to extract the description, and the unit price uses an if to find the relevant price based on this selection in the drop down list here. So it's all connected to these cells in column A. So there's two examples of tools you might build using organizational data types, but I'm sure there are many other uses for them. Now I'm not going to go into details on how I built the invoice and the course info tools because you can download this file from the link in the video description or watch my video on custom data types in Power Query, where I show you how to reference data types in formulas. Instead, in this video, I'm going to show you how you create your own organizational data types using Power BI. Before we get started, I want to cover the licensing requirements for creating and working with organizational data types. 
Firstly, the user who creates the data type in Power BI, as I'm going to show you shortly, requires a Power BI Pro license. And users who want to apply the organizational data type to data in a cell, in Excel via the data tab and then in the drop down, choosing a data type from your organization, also require a Power BI Pro license as well as a Microsoft 365 license. Now these are the users who might be setting up a pricing template or a spreadsheet for other people to use. And users who want to refresh the data types in Excel also need Power BI Pro and Microsoft 365. However, users who open an Excel workbook containing an already built template like the course info and invoice templates I have in this file, or even a workbook that contains a list of all the data types in a column like I have here on the workings sheet, only need a Microsoft 365 license and they can open the cards, interact with the data types, add items to the sheet, they can reference the data types with formulas. They can even copy cells containing data types to other cells. So once you've set up the templates for your users, they have full use of the data types without needing a Power BI Pro license. The only limitation these users have is they can't refresh the data types and they can't apply data types to any new cells. That is, they can't go to the data tab and then click on one of the data types in here. Okay. Let's look at how to set up organizational data types in Power BI. Now I started with my course data in Excel, but you can use any data source. For example, you might have your own product info in a database or employee data in a HR system. Now notice my data is in a tabular format with data for each course occupying a single row. You can see over here, I've got URLs for the syllabus and the logo. Now it's important that any image URLs can be anonymously accessible. That is, they're not on a site that requires sign-in like SharePoint. However, if images are hosted on SharePoint or OneDrive, you may be able to get an embed code that points directly to them, but I'm not going to cover that here. Now I also have a table that contains teacher's information, which I'll also create as a separate data type. Now I've saved this file on SharePoint, so I need to grab the file path from the info tab and then copy path. We're going to use that to grab the data from this file in Power BI using Power Query. So let's open Power BI. I'm going to get data from the web. That's because my SharePoint server is web-based. Control V to paste in the URL that I just copied from the Excel file. And I just need to delete the question mark web equals one from the end and click OK. and I want the courses table and the teachers table. I'm going to transform the data just to check that the data types are set up correctly before I load it into my Power Pivot model in Power BI. So these are my data types at the top. I can see text, text. These should all be text, so they're all good. Let's check the courses. And they all look okay. And if you have any data cleaning that you need to get done or add any more columns, this is where you should do it before you load it into the Power Pivot model in Power BI. So let's close and apply. And we'll go into the model view. Let me bring these over this side so we can see them closer to the properties pane. So with this table selected in the properties, I want to turn on is featured table. It's going to ask me to enter description. Now it's a good idea to start the description with featured tables, just going to help your report creators identify it. The row label field is used in Excel so users can easily identify the row. It appears as a cell value for a linked cell in the data selector pane and in the information card. So I'm going to use the course name field here and the key column field value provides the unique ID for the row. This value enables Excel to link a cell to a specific row in the table. Here I'm going to use the item code. I'll click save and this table is now set as featured. Let's repeat that for the teachers. Featured table, give it a description. The row label here will be the teacher and I'll also use teacher as the key column. 
So they're set as featured tables. Now, because my courses table contains URL fields, I need to go into the data view. I want to select the column and then column tools, data category. This is a web URL. And then for the course logo, let's repeat that this time it's an image URL. So they're set. I'll save the file. And then on the home tab, we can publish it. So we're publishing it to the Power BI service in the cloud. I'm going to choose my admin workspace. Now just make sure the workspace that you choose here is a modern workspace because this feature isn't available in the old style workspaces. So click select. Now once you get the confirmation publishing is complete, you can go to the Power BI service and set up the permissions. So we've got success. Let's go to the Power BI service. This is the one I'm demoing here. So this is my new data set. You can see it's under my admin workspace. So the first thing I need to do is go into the settings. So via the ellipsis and then settings. Here I need to make sure my data source credentials are set up. If you get a yellow warning here, you need to go in and edit the credentials. Now my data source is on SharePoint, but if your data set isn't in the cloud, then you'd need to set up the gateway connection. And that's just going to allow your data set to be refreshed. So we'll go back to our data sets. And in here, I can now manage the permissions for this data set. So this is going to tell Power BI which users can access these organizational data types in Excel. I've already got my users set up. It's inherited the users that have access to the admin workspace already, but we can add more users here via the add user button. And that's it. The organizational data type is now available for your users in Excel. So if we go back to Excel, uh, you'll need to restart Excel because it caches data types. I've already restarted Excel and you can see I'm logged into my 365 account. And if I click on my data types, you can see my organizational data types here. Now to work with data types, I can enter the course name or an item code in a cell. I'm going to enter some course item codes because they're shorter. And then with them selected in the data types gallery, these are courses. So I'm going to apply the course organizational data type. So we can see the first one was automatically recognized, but the second one is ambiguous. It's given me the question mark and over on the right hand side, the data selector pane has opened. And the reason it's not sure is because there are two codes that start with dash zero one. We've got dash zero one and dash zero one R. So I just need to tell it which one it is. It's this first one here. So I'll select it and now it's a data type. So from here, I can click on the icon to open the card. If I wanted to add some information, I can do it using this button here. So for example, if I wanted the item ID, or I could use a formula and the dot operator to get the item ID. Obviously there's a ton more you can do with data types and referencing them in formulas. For more examples, be sure to download the Excel file for this lesson and check out the video on Power Query custom data types coming up next, where I cover a load more examples. Well, I hope you're as excited about Power BI organizational data types as I am, and you have some ideas for how you might use them in your business. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here and have a go yourself. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.